Hey everybody, it's Meryl, and uh, it's 2013, it's a brand new year. Uh, we're going to do something new. I'm going to teach you how to draw in one point perspective. You're going to draw the Golden Gate Bridge, and I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, you should be able to do it even if you're brand new at art. We're going to break things down into shapes, um, and then we're going to add the shading on top of that. All of the uh, perspective uh, teaching that I do is going to be after you do the step-by-step -step, uh, because I want to model the process for you and then explain it. Step 1. The basic shape of the two arches of the Golden Gate Bridge are rectangles. Notice their proximity to each other and draw them. Step 2. Add the triangle shape to the more distant arch. Step 3. Add the rectangular shape between the two arches. Notice that it gets slightly wider as it gets closer. Step 4. Continue the rectangular shape to the edge of the paper. If you connect the three shapes together and follow them back past the more distant arch, you'll notice that it goes to a single point. This is called the vanishing point. Step 5 is to create a roadway. Notice that the line that goes above the three shapes that we just added also goes towards the vanishing point. Step 6 is easy. Add the thingies on the top of the bridge. Step 7. Add the gaps to the arch of the bridge. Step 8. Add the rectangular shapes underneath the arches. Step 9. Add the details that I just added. Step 10 is the trickiest step, but it's optional. If you wish, add these triangular shapes underneath the roadway. Step 11. Add the U shape. I went through the arch just to make it easier for you guys. You don't have to do the same. Step 12. Add the line from the top of the arch to the edge of the page. Step 13. Add another U-shape on the other side of the bridge. Step 14. Make a parallel line from the top of the arch to the anchorage towards the edge of the page. Step 15. Draw in the shape for the land. So now I want to teach you something called uh, atmospheric perspective and I want you to look out into the distance, look at the land, and look specifically at the shadow on the land. If you notice, it is not nearly as dark as the section of the bridge right in the lower right hand corner of uh, the image. Um, this is called atmospheric perspective. As we go out into the distance, the tones are going to neutralize because the atmosphere, or you know, all the dust particles, will get in the way uh, of the light. So we have very neutral tones in the distance and we have uh, lighter and darker tones, a much wider range in lights and darks uh, as we get uh, closer to us. Compare the two arches of the bridge and you will definitely see that. And we'll transition to our shading tutorial with that in mind. So I'm going to start out with a, a regular pencil just like I always do and I'm going to mark some of the darker parts. Uh, I'm also erasing uh, all of the uh, incorrect overlapping that uh, you know I did to assist you guys in the shading uh, and I'm going to start by uh, doing some some of the darker tones with the uh, like in the closer arch and I'm going to make sure that they are clearly darker than uh, the ones that are in the distant arch. So I promised you a perspective lesson. What I'm doing right now will actually help you with that. Look at those X's that I just added uh, that you can already barely see. Um, if you notice, they get bigger as they get closer to you, and then as they approach that vanishing point, they get smaller. That's the case with everything in the image. Just for the sake of simplicity, we are going to keep the sky just the color of the page. Keep it white. Keep it super simple. This is really just a study of the land and the bridge, and uh, closeness, or proximity, and distance. Um, you know, really, look at that reference image. Look at how uh, neutralized the background is. There's nothing that is uh, bright uh, or high in chroma. Uh, chroma has to do with color. It's kind of like the intensity of the color. Um, 
you know, the, the two arches, that neutralizes. The back arch uh, further away from us, that's not as bright in color. It's not as bright, uh, it doesn't have as varied tones. That's what you have to keep in mind. Now, you know, we're doing this as a pencil study because most of you guys, well, when you have requests, uh, you request me to do it in pencil. But, um, you know, even though I'm talking about chroma, that's something that can definitely be applied uh, whenever you draw or paint. Uh, but looking at those tones, um, you know, really, we want to focus on uh, the area that is uh, closest, and we want to use that uh, as a benchmark uh, for all of the other uh, parts of the image. If anything gets as dark, then we did not do our job. When we're drawing from reference, get in the habit of looking once every five seconds at the reference image. I had a printout because obviously I'm in New York and I can't exactly get the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, you know, shipped to me or anything like that. So, um, you know, I printed out a reference image and, um, you know, I, I made sure to have that close by as I was drawing. Um, I'll actually uh, upload a reference image to this, uh, uh, to my website so that you guys can, uh, you know, work from the same image if you want, uh, if you find that to be helpful. And I'll put a link in the video description. Um, I am just putting in the textures of the bridge and then I'm going to leave it alone for a little bit and I'm going to focus on the land and the water, uh, which is going to be somewhat of a challenge. Um, I put that shadow, if you notice, um, right in between the bridge. Um, I don't think this picture was taken midday. I think it was taken um, either early morning or early afternoon. Uh, you know, because you don't have that strong shadow underneath the bridge. Uh, the sun seems to be from behind, you know, judging by the, uh, the shadow that's happening on the cliffs there. Uh, it's, yeah, it seems to be uh, behind uh, the photographer. And uh, it continues. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right there. And, you know, be loose with this. You know, you don't want to recreate a photograph. That, that's kind of pointless. Um, you know, just get your, uh, I mean, each hand has its own style to it. Don't, <laughs> don't get fixated on making it perfect. Focus on the tones. The whole purpose of this exercise is to focus on the tones. Um, I'm going to do the same thing uh, with the, the water. And I'm using a Q-tip this time as a blending tool, but you could use a paintbrush uh, or you could use a, uh, a tortillion. Uh, which is a blending stump also to uh, to smudge. Um, for the water, that is going to take a lot, a lot, a lot of shading uh, in order to get that. That's one of the darker neutral tones. It's not going to be as dark as uh, the uh, close part of the bridge, but uh, it gets pretty dark, almost as dark as that uh, shadow in the background. Um, and it also has some lighter areas. So I'm just using my uh, uh, illustration markers, which I love. Um, and I used a cool gray number two just to do the back there and I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to go up to cool gray number five which I used in the corner there to really make those dark tones pop. Um, you know, the more tones that you have, the more variety of tones, uh, the more it interests the eye. Uh, so that's why I choose to use those. On top of that, I am going to use a regular pencil and a little bit of a white colored pencil but we got those tones uh, pretty well now and we're just going to start putting on the finishing touches and it's uh, you can see it's going out into the distance and uh, that's the whole point of this you the uh, uh, transition the uh, transitions the wrong word I'm sorry the translation of the three-dimensional world onto a flat sheet of paper uh, really that's what perspective is it's like learning another language and you know, once you learn to do this, uh, you get the hang of it. So hopefully this was explained pretty well to you guys. Um, I wanted to model the process for you and, uh, you know, have you follow along. Hope that this worked. Um, you could leave me comments. You could leave your requests below. Uh, I do my best to answer as many as I can. And uh, I thank you uh, sincerely for watching. And uh, it's good to be back on YouTube. Took a little bit of a break. Um, but yeah, very good to be back. Thanks for watching, everybody.